Hi data fan, I saw this Apple product showcase slide a while ago at an Apple event and I wanted to recreate it as a web app in Python to use as a reference for future customer KPI wallboards. So here's the original design and, and let me show you the final results. It looks like this. Ta -da! And you know what? I, I'm really happy with the result. It, it's not pixel perfect. If you watch the, the icons at the end, it's, it's not really aligned. This text is not centered. The, the, this gap is a little bigger. I think this round radius is a little too large, but uh, it, it, it looks good. And, and to build this, I, I listened to you. I used Reflex, a Python library, to build interactive data web apps in Python. And I thought it would make for a cool video code breakdown, but <laughs> now that I've built it, I felt it was one of my worst YouTube video ideas decisions I ever took. And I, I'll show you the code to explain why. And, and by the way, if you want to test this reflex code, you can find the code in the link uh, in the description below. Anyway, to kick this off, Reflex lets you build the underlying HTML CSS layout in a Pythonic way using Reflex components. So by looking at this original design, I need to choose how I want to lay out this in CSS. Am I going to use a combo of nested Flexbox or am I going to use a CSS grid? If you're using Flexbox, you are building one directional, one dimensional containers as rows or columns in which you can put components uh, in the row or the column, and then you can space them the way you want or you can align them the way you want. Here, it would be a Flexbox in a column direction with two rows, a first row here and a second row here. And in the first row, you would build a flexbox container as a row and put five components in there, those five gray cards. And, and then you will be nesting more and more flexbox, like this here is probably a flexbox of one, two, three elements in, in a column. This would be also a flexbox in a row of three components. So you can build all of this layout by nesting flexboxes. Or you could be using a CSS grid. Now with CSS grid, you'd be splitting your viewport into a set of rows and columns. Oh, it is very hard to draw. So here would be one column, a second column. And then the third column, fourth column, uh, it's just going to be five, six, 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 second, eight. And then we have one row and two rows, three rows and four rows, five rows. Like in the so in CSS grid, you define your grid. And for each component like this card, you can define in which cell or each row and, and column it starts from and its, its span in terms of how many rows or how many columns do I take. So in this card would be the first cell, maybe this card would be in the first row but taking the columns two, three, four, and then you can build all of your layout using this CSS grid. Both approaches are possible, you just have to choose your favorite one. Uh, because I'm used to Streamlit's columns, which is mostly flexbox in a row or, or column way, I chose to do nested flexboxes for this exercise. Which I think was actually the wrong idea. Yep. And let me show you, this is my page. I am going to make it a little smaller so that it fits. There you go. So here I've got my reflex main page, the index page. It is comprised of box here, which translates into a div container and this box has got a width and a height of 100% and 100 VH or viewport height. So this container will fit the full viewport. Uh, if you want, you can add more CSS inline props like this one, background color. When I change this, uh, it should change, there you go, the color of the background to pink. This is a good way to uh, see how the layout is modified when you're changing or editing this code. Let us remove this color. And in this box, so this is my parent container, this is my, my big box. In this box, I am going to add a flexbox container uh, in a column direction, which comprises of two elements here, a first row and a second row. So here's my first row and here's my second row. 
and there's a gap of one REM between those two rows, it, which is here, and there's some padding, which is the space between the elements and the border of the flexbox container. So it's going to be this white space. If you want a proof of this, you can put uh, 6.8 6 REM, and here you've got much more padding, much more space. And actually, I have broken everything here. Yep. Oh, yes, it's a little broken. But let's go back to our 0.8 REM. Ah, it looks better. And now I can go check those reflex components. So those are reflex modules. Uh, this, for example, translates into a reflex flex box of five gray cards. So it's going to be my... Uh, this one is my KPI row with five gray cards. And I can go into those gray cards to see how I have defined those. So this gray card is a flex box with a set of children components defined in a column uh, aligned at the center with a certain gap and a certain padding. So for example, this second card here, uh, you will have, uh, let me show the second card. It will contain a container or a box with the text up to, which is here. You would get a box, I think this is, this is a CPU KPI, so this one here, with a font weight and font size and etc. And a box with faster CPU. This, those elements there will be transferred as children of the gray card. So they will appear here with a certain styling. So this is one way of sharing styling in Reflex. You're putting your styles as CSS props of components that you are reusing across the app. This is a lot of CSS, as you can see. Uh, I honestly don't know all of the CSS props like align items or justify content. Honestly, ChatGPT, ChatGPT, Cloud, Gemini, all of those LLMs, they're pretty good at finding the CSS props. So uh, you can provide a screenshot of the original design and it will build the component and the CSS for each component for you. And if you tell Cloud or, or Gemini to convert this CSS to Python reflex code with inline styles, it will do okay. Ultimately, this exercise is not very interesting because uh, it's a lot of flexbox here, flexbox with a lot of flexbox and a lot of flexbox, and it's basically it's basically a Pythonic CSS flexbox exercise, which is very interesting if you want to do more flexible layouts than what Trimlit or Gradio provides you. This is how you train your custom design, custom web designs as a data consultant, there are way more channels that uh, are very good at breaking down CSS layouts. Uh, like I think Design Course, for example, uh, does it. But as a data consultant, that's not very interesting for a video. And the worst part is, if you, know, you pay attention, this is actually not responsive. If uh, I put this here to change the size of the screen. It's a, <laughs> it is not responsive. By responsive, I mean when the screen is small, I want those cells here to maybe go under. So you would have, uh, this would be the first row. This would be a second row. This would be a third row, fourth row, fifth row and they would all stack vertically instead of being very compressed horizontally. And uh, this, this is not responsive, first of all, because I was very lazy, but second of all, because I didn't use any reflex utilities here. Uh, reflex has a lot of responsive components. For example, you can use, uh, well, how is it called? You can use reflex break, Points, breakpoint, there it is. Uh, let me show you the documentation for this. With breakpoints, you are able to change certain CSS properties depending on the size of the screen. For example, here, you can change the, the color of this Hello World. If the screen is smaller, it becomes orange because uh, this is my initial orange size. And if it's if it becomes a little bigger, it, it becomes purple because 
uh, the size of this screen is between the small and the large breakpoint, which I don't remember, I think it's 500 to 700 pixels or something. And when it's larger than 700 pixels, uh, like here, it will become green because now you have you are over the large breakpoint, so now you are applying this green CSS instead. And the way I would use it for layout is use a CSS grid when you are over the large breakpoint, but when you are lower than this breakpoint, or when you are like, for example, lower than small, or lower than, than larger or medium, then instead of using CSS grid, you use a CSS flexbox and stack everything vertically, or maybe you do a a uh, CSS grid of two columns and stack everything in two columns instead of eight columns. I didn't use this, uh, I didn't have time for this, and and that's, uh, that's a shame. There are also other layout reflex utilities, like I, I like the aspect ratio, where you can define the actual aspect ratio of a component. So when I go back to uh, this curl here, uh, those curls are don't have a fixed aspect ratio, I could decide this card is a 16-9 uh, aspect ratio and it would be fixed uh, by, by reflex, which is pretty cool. There are other reflex components for uh, dynamic rendering, like this conditional rendering, where you can decide to show or hide components depending on some uh, Python um, variables or attributes. And you've got auto scrolling. There's a lot of reflex components that I I've could have used, but didn't. My app is basically a reflex CSS layout in Python. There's no breakpoint, there's no responsive design. So, so there are a lot of cool reflex utilities for responsive design, but as a data consultant, uh, uh, am I interested in doing CSS breakpoints? Are you interested in CSS breakpoints? Uh, I mean, do tell me in the comments, maybe, maybe, maybe I should do more web design for data analysts or data scientists, but I think that's a whole other job. Last but not least, uh, for why I think this was my worst idea ever, is this uh, reflex code. Uh, reflex is very good at interactivity. So the way you define interactivity is you go to this Rx state, and any variable here you can reuse across your app. For example, this CPU KPI, I think I used it in the second gray card as this uh, big A number or ban, uh, if you prefer. Here I'm using the app state CPU KPI, which is this 3.5. And then what I can do is I could have a Python function here, like load metric, that could load the metric from some database and inject it. Uh, let me do it like this, and then inject it inside this state, like for example, 4%. Uh, percent. And this would change this value on load, or you could change it with some Python interactive code, and it would immediately edit the dashboard. So that's how you can build... I just killed a spider. So that's how you can build interactive real-time dashboards by editing the states of variables inside this app state object. Oopsie. Uh, what the hell is this? What did I do? Anyway, um, let's go back to 3.5. But here, I mean, it's all static. There's, there's nothing. I didn't even retrieve those values from a database. There's no button. There's no way to change those variables. Um, like this is useless. Reflex uses WebSocket and FastAPI as a backend. So you've got your FastAPI, which exposes, delivers your um, HTML CSS render and uses WebSocket tunnel to communicate for the frontend and the backend to communicate. And well, here you're just using a WebSocket tunnel to do nothing, which, um, yeah, it's a shame. This is a static dashboard that has no interactivity uh, in this app state. It's mostly only layout, so you could have used 
any Python templating HTML engine with some Python code to edit those metrics. For example, Jinja or Mako, you could do plain HTML with PyScript, you could do fast HTML. Yeah, you could use any of those as a static wallboard instead of using Preflex. So, yeah, that is a lot of rambling to say that we're re there's really zero reason to use Reflex for this exercise, apart from building layouts. This is really an over-engineered solution. Not everything has to be streamlined to Reflex. This could be Jinja or, or Mako or, or Figma or PowerPoint. This is probably, this is probably using Figma. Um, the thing uh, it reminded me of is uh, I love seeing this, I'd love to build a more real-time world board, something like, let me show you what I had in mind. Yeah, so mm, subscribe to stick with me and you'll maybe see this uh, world board in real-time as a reflex app. Wait and see, I'll see you around, bye!